Okay, so for today's project, we're gonna to try to use uh, a library called Fibers for Guile Scheme. Uh, the project says this is a concurrent ML like concurrent ML like concurrency for Guile. Hmm. Okay. It says Fibers is a facility that provides Go like concurrency for Guile Scheme in the tradition of concurrent ML. Um, I think the way to translate this is that uh, Fibers leverages the continuations functionality of Scheme. I think more than likely it's delimited continuations to make it so that you can have uh, concurrent threads of execution. Uh, but concurrent does not mean parallel. It just means that uh, you can have code that looks like it is synchronous, is written in a synchronous fashion, where you just sort of have an imperative series of um, procedures that you're executing. And then uh, the code just operates as you would sort of mentally expect it to. Like your mental model of the code is that more or less that it's synchronous. However, under the covers, uh, things actually can be interleaved or the code that you're, ex you're executing can be interleaved with other code. And usually the way that the uh, system will decide which code is running at any, any given moment is that the code that you start executing, when it does something that would cause uh, the code to need to wait on a response, like let's say uh, reading something from a file or reading something from a network socket, uh, anything of that nature, even like waiting on a timer or something like that, um, it will uh, pause the, the, that line of execution, that sort of quote unquote thread of execution, thread of execution because it's not really a thread, and then it will let another a concurrent process start executing. And then once that concurrent process hits a point where it needs to wait for something, then it goes on to the next one or cycles back to the first one. It's basically, it's basically just a way for you to have uh, multiple things happening in your program at the same time, even though they may not be executing in parallel like separate operating system threads. So the point of this is to make it so that the code that you write is actually a bit easier for you to write and understand because you don't have to be worrying about things like callbacks or any kind of special special asynchronous like uh, syntax, which I think Fibers does have some asynchronous like syntax, but you can avoid it in some cases. Also using a concurrent style or at least a event style model um, under the covers for something like a web server makes your web server a bit more efficient with handling requests because it doesn't have to finish waiting on a single request uh, coming into your web server to complete before it can move on to processing another request. So you can kind of do things not in parallel per se, but at least concurrently. You can concurrently deal with a number of requests at the same time, whereas without that, you would have to either deal with requests in a serial way where you can only do one full request at a time, even if, even if it has to hit the disk or hit a database or network or something, and then move on to the next one. So uh, this is why Node.js got really popular because Node.js has an event-based model or event-based IO, I suppose you could say, where uh, whenever it reaches out to the file system or to the network socket, uh, it gets like an event whenever there's data or something happening where it needs to wake up and start handling it. So Node.js in its core is able to do this kind of concurrent processing, but the programming model is not so great because you end up with uh, what they call callback hell, or you have to deal with async await, which is a special syntax, which gives you something that looks like synchronous code, but you kind of have to be thinking in terms of async await and understand how that works for, to, for you to use it effectively. Fibers, in this case, gives us this kind of capability in Guile Scheme. And uh, it, I think it gives a few different approaches for you to be able to write code uh, concurrently in Guile Scheme using the power of continuations. So a paceable introduction to using fibers. This is a little example here where they're using something that's like Go's channels. Fibers has its own channel concept. So we're defining a server and a client, uh, and then we're uh, calling run fibers. So anytime that you want to start using fibers in your application, I believe you have to uh, wrap it in this run fibers procedure call with a thunk or a lambda that takes no arguments. It's basically just a way for um, a particular kind of execution environment to be established by run fibers and then lambda that lambda be to that lambda to be executed inside of it. Effectively, this lambda is the first thing scheduled on that work queue for fibers. And then inside of that, it creates two channels, one for the client, one for the server. And then it sp spawns yet another fiber for the server, where the server can then start uh, writing out messages and then it uh, tells the client procedure to go ahead and start reading messages. So we've got a, a different concurrent line of execution here for the server because we're spawning a fiber for that. And then the client also will 
uh, continue in the original fiber that got spawned by run fibers uh, to then read messages or write messages to and from uh, the server. So uh, in this case, the client is uh, using a for each uh, procedure to loop over uh, the, the two items in this list here, uh, ping, exclamation point, and sup, which are symbols. And then it's, uh, for each of those, it's passing them into this Lambda procedure uh, where it's calling put message, which comes from fibers. It puts it into the out channel, uh, the, the particular message. And then uh, this PK, I believe is like a pretty print. So it's not, this is nothing special, I think. Uh, it's printing out that it received an event and then it uses get message. So as you can see, put message and get message in this case are interacting with another concurrent fiber in the application. But uh, they, the, you're not doing anything explicitly like asynchronous here. There's no callback. There's no async get message or anything like that. It's just get message, put message. And is this, in, in theory, lo looks like it does block execution until put message is complete. So you're putting mes a message on this out channel. You're sending message, the, the variable or the binding MSG, whatever is in there, to this out channel. And it's waiting for that to finish before moving on to the next thing, which is reading that message that comes back, get message. So it looks synchronous, but actually it's not under the covers. It, it actually is doing this sort of concurrent uh, processing. On the server side, um, we are uh, defining a recursive loop because we have a named let here called LP, I guess for loop. And then we're using the match expression to read the messages coming in from the in channel. And then we're matching on what the symbol is, whether it's either ping or sup or some other message that we don't really know what it is. And then uh, in response to those uh, for ping, we put a message for pong. For sup, we put a message, not much, you. And then for message, we write back saying, what? What is this? So uh, point being, you have a very simple concurrent client server running in the same application. The code looks synchronous. It should be blocking these, these two pieces of code should not be able to communicate with each other without fibers because one is going to block waiting for the other to complete, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, this is a good little basic example uh, to show how fibers can be used in an application. Now, for our purposes, we actually need to use fibers to drive um, an HTTP server. And there is a library in fibers for, for doing just that. Uh, you can actually look at the manual, I think, if I can pull up the link for that. Let's see, homepage. All right, the manual is right here on this wiki, it seems. So fibers includes a backend for Giles built-in web server that uses non-blocking fibers to read requests and write responses. Fibers also includes a standalone web server that uses Giles HTTP facilities, but is not, but not its web server framework. Uh, that's interesting. To run a web server that serves each client from Fiverr, specify the Fiverr's backend when running your web server. So um, if you don't know, Guile does have a built-in uh, web server and both web server and web client libraries. And they work pretty well. I've used them a few different times. Um, in fact, the stream chat you see popping up here somewhere, whenever it does pop up, that's actually a Guile web server uh, running in a local um, process that is connecting to IRC and getting the messages from the System Crappers Live IRC channel. And then an OBS has a browser that's polling that HTTP server to get the HTML to load up on that page, basically. So uh, yes, it's very simple to write a basic web server, HTTP server in Guile with the existing libraries, but then Fiverr seems to replace some of the core mechanics of that to uh, make it be concurrent. So that's, uh, that's what we're gonna try to use uh, for our purposes. So. Uh, we pull in the web server module. Uh, we define a normal handler for this, uh, which is just a, the plain old ha handler that you would see for any Guile web server uh, procedure, handler procedure. And then we use run server, which I believe is, oh, okay, run server, which comes from web server, but we give it this fibers symbol, which seems to be, it, they must be hooking in somehow to do that. Cause obviously we're not pulling in any fibers libraries for that to happen, which seems weird. Seems like it shouldn't just sort of happen by default, but. So uh, we can just try to get started with this. I think that the best thing to do is just to jump in and see um, if we can get a basic web server running uh, in a Guile program and then uh, move on from there. So to run a web server that serves clients from each blah, 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 whatever, uh, I'm gonna copy this use modules into our main file. I'm gonna move this stuff over a little bit. And then uh, we can go ahead and try to run this again in the compilation. So 
meta x compile we're going to say guile source slash main sem and uh it seems to be running so i should be able to go to well i'm not sure what the default port is, is 8000 localhost uh 8000 um run server oh 8080 okay so that would be the third choice or fourth choice let's say there we go hello world so this actually is running from within fibers so <clears throat> We've got the uh, the basic server running. It says hello world, cool. That's using fibers. That was really easy. Let's go back to the docs real quick and just see what else it has to say about running a server. Performance seems to be about 60% of the standard web server backend implementation shipped with Guile, though it's not as battle hardened. Okay. Uh, uses channels to invert to invert the inversion of control imposed on the backend by the web server framework. Uh, Guile's web server framework single threads. Okay, Guile's web server framework single threads all web request handling. The handler procedure can be passed a number of additional state arguments and is expected to return a corresponding number of additional values. Sometimes it's what you want, but it does limit concurrency. Um, let's see. For, for this reason, Fibers includes a simple standalone web server that uses Guile's HTTP facilities, but not its web server framework to run a standalone web server. Uh, use the Fibers web server module, and it seems to be basically the same API but just not using the web server backend. Um, enables more parallelism than using the standard web server backend. As the handlers can run in parallel when you have multiple cores, single core performance of the standalone server is slightly better than the web server backend, unlike the backend scales with the number of cores available. So why even use the normal web server backend? Seems like you would want to use this instead. So how about I just change my code to use that? I don't know what I might be missing out on by doing this, but uh, I think that it's going to be more advantageous to do things the way that um, fibers is saying is more efficient especially if we want to scale to multiple cores um, that only really matters if you have a vm that you're deploying the application to that has multiple cores but you know still worth having so let me just go ahead and uh, kill this process and then start it up again and then go back and uh, reload our page and we still seem to be getting a hello world i also want to just write something out here so uh got a request that's what happens all right got a request so we can see that the requests are still coming through which is good uh so now we're using the special version is provided by fibers and not the built-in web framework however the api seems to be the same and it does use a lot of the same stuff i think all, all of the request objects and things of that nature are um and the api of how the handlers get called is the same as what you would use for the uh, web web framework that's my understanding at least so anything else that we need to see here? I mean, there's other things we will need to know. So there's some REPL commands we can use for fibers as well, which is kind of nice. I saw something for timers, operations, first class abstractions for asynchronous events. <clears throat> some of this stuff seems pretty useful. We might have to use it at some point in the future. But for now, we have the ability to do concurrent uh, request handling. Uh, that's the basics of fiber. Um, we really don't need to go into more detail about that right now. I mean, you can just kind of see that it does give us the ability to have a concurrent web server in Guile's scheme if that's something that you want. If we were to try to you know, ex extend this out to a real example that uses fibers for more than just the uh, concurrent request handling, uh, probably what we would have is <clears throat> channels that you can use to communicate between different components of the, uh, the back end. So maybe if you have like a worker queue or something that's doing other things like, uh, you know, executing programs to generate thumbnails or scale down thumbnails things of that nature or maybe you're calling out to some other service that does that then you could sort of use a channel to push a job onto some job queue um, asynchronously so that the uh, request itself doesn't have to wait for it to be acknowledged or anything you just sort of pass a message to a channel and then the other component is listening and takes that that might be overkill i don't really know but anything that does touch the file system or a, a network socket those things definitely you want to have uh, fibers for and also like uh, background timers inside of the application. Sometimes you want to have like a, a scheduled uh, thing that happens inside the server. Uh, maybe like a flushing out some things that are in memory to the database or like refreshing a cache or other things like that. Uh, using fibers does give us a little bit of a leg up on doing more advanced things in the back end that we might need to do um, that require some kind of asynchronous behavior or concurrency. So um, that's basically it for, for fibers. Uh, we're going to be using fibers in the emacspackages.com project. So if you're interested to learn more about fibers, uh, check out the videos that we'll be doing from uh, the, the streams working on that project. It, various different points we'll be using fibers for, you know, different features we'll be implementing. And then uh, we'll, we'll definitely talk more about what we're learning over time, especially if we have, if we come up with any interesting use cases that 
um, really sh sort of show the, uh, the value of using fibers in your project. So hopefully that was useful for you and uh, let me know in the comments what you think about that.